Brandon Scott Jones plays Captain Isaac Higgin uh, Toot in the CBS comedy Ghosts. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. And I wanted to ask you, Brandon, uh, in Ghosts, what for you was a gasp worthy moment? Ooh, a gasp worthy moment. For me, that, let's just see. There's the two that he definitely had, but I think like the biggest gasp worthy moment. Well, off screen was when Richie, who plays um, Pete with the arrow through his neck, um, scared me um, repeatedly over and over and over again off screen. And he put it on, he, he got it on camera. So that's my off screen gasp worthy moment. And um, where, which is multiple times. And then I would say the on screen gasp worthy moment would be, you know what? I'm actually going to go with, Rose McIver walking down the stairs in the prom episode and uh, Utkarsh and Butkar in his tuxedo. Like just seeing the two of them together was um, very, very hot. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was like a gasp. I was like, oh, my God, my friends, they're supermodels. What did, uh, what did he do to scare you? Oh, he would. So if you, it's on TikTok, some uh, or and or Instagram or something. But basically, whenever um, I was sort of like having a private moment alone, he would rush in with his scam camera, screaming my name, and I would just absolutely lose my shit. <laughs> it was absolutely <laughs> crazy. I'm like, I, I learned in this process that I have zero chill. Like there, if 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 there was to be like an absolute like catastrophic event. Do not rely on me. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's great. Uh, now, Brandon, like it's such a big cast, um, th this show. You got about like 10 regulars or something like that. Um, when you're in such a big cast, how um, how do you, you as an actor, as a performer, make the other members of the cast look good? The, uh, 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 you mean like make other, uh, the, everyone else look good? Is that yeah, how do you, how, yeah, how do you serve the others when there's so many people there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a really, I love the way you phrase that question. I think that is um, hopefully the key to a, a, like a, an ensemble building itself, which is kind of like trying to like take care of each other and having each other's back. I, I, I come from a, uh, an improv comedy background at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. And that's sort of one of the first things that you're taught and you're taught about just like making, taking care of each other. And I think one of the easiest ways we do that is we try to give each other space to play and we try to give each other jokes. There's so many times that like right before a take, Okarsh would come to me and say like, hey, try saying this line. And I'd be like, oh, okay, great. Or I might say that to somebody else. And if you have that idea, and it's all about just trying to like really put, find our ownership together as a unit over all of the scenes that we're doing. And uh, I think on top of that, we, we filmed the show up in, in Montreal. So uh, when, especially during a pandemic, it, the, even though we're so close to the US, the borders made it feel a lot further away. And we all we really had was each other. So our work friends become our out of work friends and our out of work friends became our you know, work friends. And so we sort of like learn each other's personalities and really try to like help each other out off camera as much as on camera. And hopefully that translates. Mm. Are there other ways that your improv background at the Upright Citizens Brigade uh, sort of has influenced how you approach this character and, and, and this uh, role? Um, yeah, like it's, it's, that's a, uh, oh, wow. Uh, the answer immediately is, is yes. Because I think, I, I think, you know, one thing is like, I, I think is differentiating improv from being just like saying something funny and realizing that it is this like collaborative tool and that it's really something that as an actor, we can use to sort of explore our characters a little bit deeper, where even if it doesn't end up in the show, the fact that we chose to make an impulsive choice in the moment based around the given circumstances that we have feels like it's something that it's, it's doing, work, doing work for you. And the other thing too is, is, is about understanding your voice within a larger group of ensemble. Like you absolutely correct. There's 10 series regulars. And, you know, as much as, you know, everybody's instinct might be to sort of like get their funny thing in there or get their line or say their thing, knowing that your voice is part of the larger group and that larger group is what this show is about. 
and figuring out where that fits is a really fun challenge and a really fun process. And I think we're all down, down the clown when it comes to like figuring that stuff out. Mm. So your character, Isaac, uh, what, like, what is the sort of biggest challenge for you in, in portraying him? Oh gosh. Well, just from like an, an acting standpoint, something that I didn't think about was uh, we can't hold or touch anything. We can't like <laughs> lean on anything really either without technically like falling right through it. So <laughs> finding <laughs> just from like a, just like, I wonder if all the goats feel this way. I don't know if I've ever actually asked them, but like just finding, like trying to find your gravity as a performer within the scene, knowing that there's only a finite number of things that you can do uh, is, is, is challenging uh, in and of itself. And, and with Isaac specifically, I like to think that I'm different than him in, uh, in a lot of ways. Like, I think he's a little, hopefully, my God, I hope he's more arrogant than I am. Um, but uh, he's somebody that, uh, he's somebody that, that I actually felt a, a, a great deal of compassion sort of playing him as much as it was a challenge to sort of like revisit this like concept of, of not being the person you thought you were gonna be, not being the person you, you, of you felt other people expected of you and how do you react to that? And so, you know, from like an acting standpoint, the, the other challenge is, is trying to bring as much truth to that too without sort of torturing yourself. Hmm. And uh, he has this sort of uh, fun rivalry with Alexander Hamilton, who yeah. we never see in the, uh, in the, in the show. Uh, yeah. But your character was from uh, those same uh, sort of wars, battle that time period. Uh, so you got to encounter uh, Hamilton a little bit. Um, how fun is that for you getting to make those references to the Hamilton musical and Hamilton sort of uh, the, the historical figure? Oh my God, uh, it's so fun. Um, it's one of my favorite things about, and I, he, the best way to sort of like describe that is like when I started doing this, there was this like instinct that I had to sort of like, like do like academic research and like go back through and 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 learn what daily life was like and what was Am Alexander Hamilton like and why would I be rivals with him? But I kind of realized quickly that that's not necessarily what this called for. And the fun of it is like how we view Hamilton today. And mm -hmm. we view like that character, I mean like seven years ago, no one was talking about, the, about Alexander <laughs> Hamilton and how yeah. every single person is. And so I really tried to look at like all that pop culture that we had um, surrounding that specific time period and the way, specifically when you're growing up in America too, like what you're taught about our founding fathers is like so um, mythical and so uh, glossed over their flaws that it's almost like comical. The fun thing there is to play somebody who feels like they should be treated that way. <laughs> And but he is so flawed and has so much work to do on himself that he there's there's he will drive himself crazy trying to, to be anything like like Alexander Hamilton. Was there a particularly uh, actually for you? What was the funniest scene to to film on Ghost? Oh my! Um, the funniest scene to film on Ghost for me. Okay, so the funniest scene for me to film on that show was when I'm trying to hit, uh, there's a scene where I'm trying to hit on Hetty and uh, I'm just like way in over my head, really trying to uh, trying to like lay it on thick and not really feeling it. And Rebecca Wasaki, who plays Hetty in, in the show is just so funny and so specific and small that I was, I, I remember it was a real struggle to sort of like keep it together while I was acting opposite her because she's just so, so, so good. Um, and then any other time that, that they let Devin loose as Thorfinn to sort of start screaming and, <laughs> and improvising, his specifics are unreal. So it is, there's, I think there's a couple times in the show you can kind of see us all like like clench our assholes because I didn't have to say it that way, but I chose to, but like clench um, to try to prevent ourselves from laughing because he's just so, so, so funny.
Do you ever find particular like like what do you find where do you, what do you find funny? Like what things about the show make make you laugh or or that yeah. Yeah. That appeal to your comedic sensibilities. <laughs> yeah. I think um the the thing I the desperation specifically that Isaac has but really all the ghosts have now that they have the opportunity to talk to somebody who can affect the outside world they're like they can't believe it and I think their their eagerness to sort of um uh capitalize on that uh and I think also how sort of like ridiculous they are in a sense that in some cases they've been trapped here for 500 a thousand years like I always try to I always think to myself I'm like we're all obviously insane like so anytime you're saying something or anytime our characters are feeling something there's always this element where I'm just like my god like they have they have been waiting way too long for this particular moment or they are absolutely numb and the way they are like just so willing to trick each other throw each other under the bus because they know they're stuck together there's something really really funny in this like sort of like fucked up family way which i think is like really really hilarious to me and then also like the specifics like the 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 specifically with isaac like i love when they write him there's a line earlier in the season where he admits that he wasn't at the Boston Tea Party, but he was rather at a tea party in Boston at his aunt's house. And he's just <laughs> casually omitted, lied by omission. Um, that's so, so funny to me and just so weird and dark and 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 and, and sad. And that's that's where I'm that's where I'm like, oh, that's my favorite thing. Hmm. You, you talked a bit before about your work uh, with the Upright Citizens Brigade and how that's sort of like a, a lot uh, of stuff from your background. And sometimes there they talk about like finding the game in a scene and, and yeah. stuff like that. Is there a game to Isaac? Yeah, it's sort of changed, right? Where it's it's sort of like, um, uh, it, I think the game to Isaac is, is his... Um, the, he hasn't he he hasn't covered up the cracks as well as he thought and so every single time i think he thinks he's one step ahead but he's two steps behind so there's this you know whether it's because of his sexuality and he thinks that he's pulled the wool over everyone's eye and he's some classic soldier or it's like his place in history as like well, he wasn't at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, but he was outside. You know, uh, I think it's it's that kind of one step to the side of history and one, you know, um, one step down from where the man he thinks he's supposed to be. And anytime it's just missing, it's that's that to me is the most fun. And I think that's like the game of Isaac. Mm. Oh, that's cool. And like, as you sort of uh, spoke before about that sort of really funny scene with Hetty where um, you're, you're, you're trying to kiss her nape or trying to, <laughs> yeah. or trying to, trying to not kiss her nape. Yeah, just... um, yeah, but but that relationship with Hetty ends up becoming a really nice tender one where he can open up to her in a way that he hasn't been able to maybe even with him sort of self before. Yeah. Um, what's it like going around such a broadly absurd character to have to tap into those touching moments? Oh, that's, oh, that's such a good question. I, I, um, it's, it's really fun. It's, it's this thing that sort of kind of keeps you invested in it. So just like technically, like you're sort of like, you can have, I could, I could go all day long, just like playing silly, fun Isaac, and you know, just somebody who's blustery and, and upset that he's not remembered and revered. But I think when you start to really have those moments that are a little bit more vulnerable, the characters sort of start to 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 deepen. So, and, and when you, I mean, it, the challenge is that we're playing characters that can't go anywhere, can't do anything, can't hold anything, can't you know, literally can't move forward in time or backward in time, essentially, or can only move forward in time and just like aimlessly. So that I think the way you really, really start to try to connect with them is through those like more vulnerable moments. And it, and it, and it, and it's nice. It's, 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 um, it's a good, it's a good break that allows, I think, hopefully for things that are going to be funny down the road to be even funnier, because hopefully if you're caring about these characters and you're caring about, you know, what they're going through and recognizing that, wow, just because he's a revolutionary war soldier in love with a British soldier who he accidentally killed and he, they're both dead and they're never going to be able to do anything other than just be 
like lovers, um, you know, hopefully you're, there's some sort of connection in that. And I think um, when, you, when any audience member or any actor can find that connection with their, their character, I think that's, that's really, really important. Hmm. And is there anything you've learned from like this whole show is about sort of the ghosts coming together and learning from each other and becoming better people through being together. What have you learned from being in this cast? Oh, um, I, <laughs> well, um, my, my instinct is that um, I got to work harder to keep up with them because they're all real, <laughs> real good. Um, and they're really, 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 really funny and quick and smart and, 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 and prepared in a way that I try to be, but I see how they are. So like from, from that aspect, for sure. And then I think other thing is, um, I kind of learned that, that like how, how much we are sort of afraid to talk intergenerationally to each other that, you know, that, you know, there's that, you know, the classic parents don't understand or, you know, gosh, my grand, parents are are you know so out of touch and they'll never understand they'll never get it that this show I think more often than not reminds me that that the problems that you know a person is dealing with in their time period aren't really that different than the ones that people were dealing with a long time ago as well and from a different era and I think there's something really nice and uniting about that mm. Oh, that's cool. Um, and oh, just another like random UCB thing is you got um Matt Walsh got to who was one of the founders who was oh, that, got to come into an episode. Oh, that was that was very cool. That was like a really like nice um, personal full circle moment for me. I'm not the only one that's done um, Upright Citizens Brigade stuff. But, oh yeah, you know on the show, but like to have him be there. I remember watching him perform and whenever he would come into town and to do a show it was like such a big deal you couldn't miss it and then to you know obviously be such a fan of him from 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 his work on on the upright citizen the brigade tv show and veep and all these things um that was really cool we got to like go out to dinner and have like a real fun night in montreal and uh, I, that 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 was that was an awesome experience mm. Brandon, what is, uh, what's, what would you say Ghost is about? If you had to sort of like very quickly sort of like, you know, encapsulate it in a word or a, or, or a phrase or something, what, what is Ghost? Oh, encapsulate, uh, Ghosts is about, um, Ghost is about what happens when you finally are seen for the first time in your life. I think that's what it is. Um, at least from the Ghost perspective. From Sam and Jay's perspective, from Ukarsh and Rose's perspective, it's what happens when your Airbnb <laughs> is haunted by a bunch of ridiculous humans. But I think um, uh, dead people. Uh, I, I, but I do think, from on like that larger sense, um, I would say it's yeah. What happens when you're finally seen? Or I would say it's a show about it's a show that's a warning to like not don't wait to die to start to live. Mm. <laughs> And finally, uh, Brandon, something that um, your character uh, learnt by the end of the season was that you should say things before it's too late. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to say before we finish this interview? Because <laughs> you're running out of time. I'm running out of time. Uh, yeah. My gosh. Uh, anything I would want to say. Um, uh, I, I want to say that um, I don't know how I feel about Elon Musk buying Twitter. And that's just that. And also, um, I'd also say that uh, I think the um, I think the Orioles are going to be in for a tough baseball season. So those are my last <laughs> things that I would say. I love it. Uh, two uh, gasp worthy comments, Brad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. gasp worthy. Yeah. Also, <gasps> Jonathan Bailey from Bridgerton. Uh, if you're single, hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> <gasps> okay. There you so, go. That was the guy. There you go. That was the ass. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, thanks so much for talking with us today. All the best of luck with the Emmy Awards this year and for oh. Go Season 2. And uh, you can, if you're watching this interview, you can go to goldderby.com where you can make your own awards predictions, join the discussion in our forums, and you can uh, watch other interviews with award contenders. Thanks so much, Brandon. Thank you so much, Matt. This was awesome. Thank you very much. 